Now let's discuss the worrying trend of security breaches across the country. I'm now being joined on the News at 10 by a former officer of the Department of State Services and, of course, the Regional Vice President, ASIS International, Olusheyi Adetayo. Thanks a lot for joining us Pleasure on the News at 10. So we hear bank robberies, banditry, kidnapping, then you have killings. Uh, many people say we're in the middle of a serious crisis. Is that the way you see it? Yeah, I think they're right, uh, because it's actually obvious that um, you know, we just get into experience new incidents every day, and um, it appears as if there's no hand in sight as it is. I think this can likely be attributed to, one, the economic situation, the political situation in the country, that has given the situation to exacerbate to, to this level. Um, like the last time I came, I mentioned the fact that um, the election actually diverted government security agencies' attention away mm. from the, those seemingly intractable security challenges because they need to actually focus security assets on the election. So that I give them you know, the, the liberty to be able to expand and cover lots of ground. So we are like coming back to now face what we left behind and then finding it uh, more... Um, intractable. Yeah, but what, what should the approach be? Because the way, you, the way you see it is not one part of the country. You have pockets of different sorts of violence in, in different parts. For instance, you, you have Kano where they talk about ethnic clashes and all that. Different from Lagos where we're now Even seeing Even the chief kidnapping. crisis exactly. in, in Taraba that so is, is it, right now. I don't know, what should the approach be? Since there are different sorts of issues in different places, what sort of a security approach are you right looking at? Right now, you see, um, we need to realize the fact that the current security architecture is not working. It's not working in the sense that um, we're paying and giving too much responsibility to the current uh, government security agencies. Mm -hmm. There are so many areas that are covered right now that should be left for the private security to handle so that they can actually handle the core uh, areas. If you look at the United States, there are, you know, areas of security that are left for private security to handle. So you can use, you know, concentrate the efforts of the government security agencies on core areas where the manpower, for example, if you, if you remove the number of police that are providing executive protection right now and then divert them to core security issues, mm -hmm. it will go a long way. But a whole lot of them are currently providing that facility. Okay, also, for those who are there now, you know, who are, whose job it is, I mean, you've been in, the, in service yeah. before. What is this whole thing about not being able to know when an attack is going to happen? And then you react afterward. I mean, we continue to talk about it, but it remains the problem. Yeah, well, I agree that, um, you know, it, it takes a lot for, for government to be able to develop strong intelligence assets whereby you'll be able to prevent or predict an attack. But the truth is that you require the support and assistance of the people, the, the locals, for you to be able to effectively uh, nip uh, a crime or an incident before it happens. So that is not there. So the issue of the trust is actually not there or is eroding faster than we can okay, think let of me ask now. You about something that we should know about. I, I mean, being that you were you know, once uh, part of the counterterrorism task force in Zamfara particularly, and then we see the, the challenges there again. What exactly is the problem with that place? Okay. Um, I wasn't uh, part of tax force in Zamfara, yeah. but my understanding of what is happening in Zamfara, you see, if you look at the map mm. of Zamfara, from Taleta to down to Nijay, there's a, there's a belt, uh, a forest belt, and, you know, uh, uh, Bukuyum and Co. Mm. And that is where these people, right from Shokuto, so there's a forest belt that extends straight to Nijay. And that is where these people are. And about eight local governments in that, uh, about out of the about 40 local governments in Zafara, uh, there's mining activities that's actually going on there. And um, the issue of mining is on one side. Then the issue of banditry is another factor. Mm. And then if you, if you now look at activities that is surrounding, you know, intervention in terms of trying to cope uh, this issue, it's, it's like we are having fire. I mean, adding fuel to the fire. Okay. Now, let me, let, let, me, let me try to explain one or two oh, things. Well, you need to be extremely, we're actually running, run out of, completely okay. run out of time if we're going to talk about security. Okay. So, there's large numbers of bandits hibernating inside our forest. And they, have, they are heavily harmed. 
and they are also made up of foreigners like because it's extends straight to Nigeria, so they can actually move into and there have been this relationship between them and the Emirates in terms of trying to negotiate with them for them to maintain peace so it's more or less like a business All right. in that particular axis and it is when you see them they kidnap a, in a particular community and tax the community to make payment and the community fails to make payment they go there and clear that community all right that's where we're going to have to leave it regional vice president of assets international luashei aditayo thanks a lot for joining us Thank you so much. on the news at 10.